Welcome to The Value Script, the podcast where we bring value every episode for the everyday person. We're your hosts, Lonnie and Meredith Carmichael, and we are going to be doing another episode with Ryan Wade, certified trauma therapist, Phoenix, Arizona. Can we jump into the rabbit hole of EMDR? Yeah, with, yeah, yeah. Since we're talking about that yeah. anyway, how, how is that related to REM sleep and how do you stimulate that in real life and what is it? Well, so it's all, yeah, all of these, all of these, um, uh, techniques that we're talking about and EMDR is just the, the, the processing it's emotional processing through like eye movement, you know, and through, um, um, so uh, there's a few other therapies that do that, but mostly with EMDR, it's, it's, it's including the body. So it is including the nervous system. Okay. So now we have to address that nervous system, right? Now we have to address that heart. Now we have to address, oh, here's the sensations that come up, right? So now, I can be in coherence and take that pause and rather than be reactionary, you know, um, I take that pause and I just make a better choice. Is there a That's late, part of EMDR too. Is there kind of a last scene or like a, I, I can't think of the right word, latent effect of EMDR because I, I was going through some EMDR a couple years ago and the next day I was driving on the freeway mm -hmm. and all of a sudden it hit me what was wrong mm -hmm. and I understood something that I had buried. Mm -hmm. for years mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, since childhood is that typical does that typically happen when you do MDR? it does or? yeah it does and you know i had so i had a i had a client it was it was interesting she had uh she had passed uh, and then they brought her back and it, it was all stemmed from some real traumatic stuff that had just happened you know and and so she came to me because we had done counseling sessions before and she said um i don't remember anything you know, from after that. And um, the only thing I really know are the details that people have told me about that trauma, you know, but she had totally blocked it out. And she said, I would really like to come to a knowledge of these things. I would really like to get that uncovered, you know? And my response was, we're going to trust your system on that. <laughs> because, because I'm going to tell you what, if you are suppressing something, there's a damn good reason why. Yeah. Don't mess with that. And it's okay. Like, it really is okay. It's If it's not coming to you, just let it be. Yeah. Because, it, because it will eventually. And that's what you're saying is that when you start to become to, or when you start to come to a place of, I can now look at that because maybe the emotions aren't as strong or the tie to it isn't as strong or I've, you know, gained the knowledge or the, the skills that I need to actually go through that. Okay, now you'll, your system will start to remember that and uncover that. But it is a layered effect, you know, and EMDR is a very um, preventative uh you know, uh, tool. And, and that's what you're doing in morning meditation. That's why morning meditation is just essential. You're just being preventative about stuff, right? You're processing your heart focused breathing. You're, you know, you're doing all of that because what you're doing is you're going through all the stuff that wasn't able to be processed while you sleep or whatever, right? Or it's just hanging around there. And, and believe you, Believe me, when you have unprocessed stuff, it hangs around. I mean, it, it like takes up space in you, yeah. you know? When I'm thinking about the past, I can't be present. I can't because my focus, my attention, my alarms Energy. are all right there. So I have to let that go. I have to process that. I have to move through that, right? So if I have to get through that, <laughs> all right, let's, let's find the most painless or pain-free as, you know, as much pain-free as we can, right? Ways to do that. Let's find the support system to do that because otherwise it's hard to do it on your own. You know, I mean, it really is, right? So if we have those tools, it, it certainly helps. Um, but but I love EMDR for that because it does. It starts to kind of uncover things and, um, you know, and that's really how healing happens is it's step by step by step and those small little wins, you celebrate those. You know, yes, I think I think that's an important thing. That's something hard for me to do is celebrating those small wins. Mm -hmm. When you're looking at this mountain, you climb, you know, you still have to climb. Mm -hmm. Just being grateful, I got well, you're 100 feet down the road. Yeah, you, well, you got to focus on. I'm still going. I'm still going. I still got to keep going. I, you know, I still have this to do, right? Rather than look at what we accomplished today. You know, look at how close, how much closer we are right. to the finish line. Um, you have to have those tiny little successes i mean otherwise you give up it's kind of like a new year's resolution 
they don't work because they're lofty goals, you know, typically, and and we don't celebrate the small wins. Um, if we're going to run a, you know, marathon, we got to we got to talk about, you know, well, at, at, at the halfway mark, I'm going to be throwing up. I'm going to be tired. I'm going to be, you know, but if you don't think about that, if you don't like see yourself, OK, so I'm going to breathe through that. I'm going to this. This is what I'm going to do. Here's my solutions, you know, through that. If you don't do that, you're going to give up at that at that, you know, halfway mark. Right. Rather than finish the marathon. So. You have to have those tiny little wins. Oh, look what I did. Awesome. Good. Go me. You know? <laughs> and then you just keep on going. Thank you for that. How is yeah. EMDR different than like hypnotherapy? Because when I first started hearing about these things, I kind of thought they were more similar. Mm -hmm. um, and But since you're certified <laughs> in hypnotherapy, I've never had a guest on that is. Well, does, it sounds interesting. Is all it's EMDR question, involved yeah. with lights? Not always. No, okay. no. Because I did always. EMDR and mine was like a little light box yeah. thing I had on my yeah. lap. And and what they're trying to do is they're trying to get you to access the 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 different parts of the brain by doing the eye movement that mm -hmm. is simulated during REM sleep. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, exactly. And that and that is what you're doing. You're mimicking REM sleep. You know, you're you're doing it while they're awake. So. Mm -hmm. And that does help unlock parts of your brain. Yeah, it really does. It really does. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. it really I'll does. stand behind EMDR all day. Well, and remember, yeah, <laughs> oh, I, yeah, I agree. And and problems occur because maybe it was in the audio, you know, uh, visual cortex or whatever, you know, whatever it is, right? Um, it's it's accessing that information of basically where we got stuck, you know. Um, where the where the issue occurred, and so we're just trying to find it that way as well. I think along with EMDR, it's important too that, like you do, you teach the coping mechanisms because if you're not with your therapist and something comes up, mm -hmm. you need to be able to process that mm -hmm. and not mm -hmm. go into a panic attack at home. Mm -hmm. And so I think you know my experience was. Um, it's, it's good to have those coping mechanisms. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> well, and it, but like, so that session with you, that happened just, was it two weeks ago? Two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. I have used those skills three good. times yeah. since then. You know, good. like, you just, it's a tool. Well, and you know? how, how does it feel when you're able to do that on your own? So good. Yeah, exactly. It, well, it's empowering, yeah. right? To mm -hmm. Take your power back rather mm -hmm. than getting sucked into... Right. I don't know. And I, and I don't know. I got to admit, I don't know if it's my ego or what, but it, it the whole butterfly hook thing... Like I was like, I'm not doing that. I know. I know. <laughs> that's that's not that's not me. But goodness, yesterday I was in an I, I got something came up and just like it was like you were saying, your your um your nervous system and your digestive system mm -hmm. are very intertwined because all of a sudden like something hit me, this thought came to me and I got nauseous. Mm -hmm. And that was really? not normal. Like I was standing there talking to my wife, we're getting ready for church and all of a sudden I'm just like See you in a minute. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I got yeah. sick. I was like, "What yeah. happened?" Like, we were just talking. All of a sudden, Let me go deal know. with this. <laughs> it was and, and it was yeah. violent, and, and right. it was and it was incessant throughout the day until mm -hmm. I finally sat down and thought, "Okay, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do the butterfly <laughs> hug. I'm gonna do the breathing. I know it's not gonna work, but I'm still gonna do I it." Know, I know, right? And then five minutes later, I'm like. It works. I'm okay. Yeah. I'm okay. Yeah. Right. You know, it was, but, it, but it takes those intense moments for us to finally do it. Right. Because I mean, we have to experience it. Um, if we don't know what it feels like to go from sickness to, Ooh, that's coherence. You know, that feels pretty good. If we don't know what that feels like, we don't know what that's about. And, and we don't know. It's anxiety that. causing because it's like, Oh my gosh, am I going to feel like this forever? How mm -hmm. do I get this to go away? Mm -hmm. Right. And yeah. then where, versus like, Hey, I got a plan. Mm -hmm. I, can, I can do something and I don't have to take right. a pill to do it. Right. You know, or mm -hmm. smoke a joint or drink a glass of alcohol or I can, I can do it. Right. Well, and I think therapy just needs to be so preventative. I mean, that's why morning meditation, um, you say morning meditation. And again, you know, people think of the hippy dippy, but morning meditation is just, what are you doing to get yourself right at the beginning of the day? Of the day. That's it. And, and that way you can have just a better day and, and therapy needs to be very preventative. Um, you know, look at, look at the medical field. Um, I, I've said this a lot with the medical field. It's, it's kind of like I'm broke now fix me now. Now don't get me wrong. <laughs> Modern medicine is a miracle, right? right? 
But the fact of the matter is, is that we need to be preventative and make sure that we're preventing preventing these illnesses or doing whatever it takes to prevent these illnesses before they actually occur, you know, um, things we can't stop, of course, but, but therapy needs to be the same way. Um, we don't go to the therapist because, well, I mean, we do because, Hey, I'm broke now, fix me. But, but when we start cluing into these techniques, now we can start, fixing ourselves before we even get to that place. Mm -hmm. And thank God for that, you know, because I don't want to be in that turmoil anymore. I just want to be happy. We we can incorporate that into our self improvement journey. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't want to, I don't want to deal with people's, you know, um, judgment. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to deal with my own. I just want to kind of like go through life and be happy and la la la. And so, but this is one of the ways that you, you can do it because life throws at you some really shitty things and um, here's how you can combat that yeah. and, and actually feel okay about that. Yeah, absolutely. You know? Yeah. You, you mentioned um, healthcare. Mm-hmm. And one of the questions I have on here is, one, and it's one of the areas that really inspired me to start the podcast, is mental health in healthcare providers, mm-hmm. especially dentists, because we have a reputation for being a little suicidal yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, unfortunately, and um, I have been closely touched by that. Mm-hmm. Um, lost, lost a couple friends. And why, why is that? Why, why, why does that plague our profession? And it, and it plagues physicians and nurses as well right um in fact i think their rates of suicidality and depression are higher than mm-hmm. dentists um, mm-hmm. when it's been studied so they how, are how yeah. can we yeah. how can we help save some lives like how what needs to happen and and, yeah. and what's broken you know we we're uh-huh. trained so much on how the body works and we're trained so much on like every little system you got the krebs cycle and like you know microbiology all the way through gross anatomy and physiology and all these things. We have such a vast knowledge of what's going on mm-hmm. and we're just not happy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and we're typically, um, are, we have good profession. We have good incomes. Typically are living the lifestyles that we've chosen. Mm-hmm. Why are, why do we have such a hard time being happy? Um, so I've had a few dentists actually talk to me about this and saying, you need to develop something for the actual office, you know, that maybe the office manager runs, you know, some kind of, Hey, let's all check in because this, this is a real thing. And, you know, I, my personal opinion is that, um, it's painful to work on your mouth, you know, and people typically don't want to, they're scared. They don't want to see you. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. And that makes us feel bad. Yeah. You know, and the, then, the fact of the matter is that people don't want to be in, in the room with us. That really does make us feel bad. No, and too, like you when know? I'm doing my best to like give a comfortable injection mm-hmm. and, and they patient still winces and the granted I'm working with kids. <clears throat> mm-hmm. So I have a tremendous amount of empathy for, for when, you know, you give a kid a shot and they cry. I mean, of course. Right. You know, if I give, if I give Justin a shot though, I expect him not to cry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, but at the same time, like it's a real thing. Like he said, he'll just pass out. I mean, that's real. And yeah. it's, you know, and there's fear around it. And I, that's right. definitely what impacts my right. mental health is I am doing my best to try to give my best to my right. patients. And no matter what I do, there could be a negative outcome, even from the best experience. I know. And, and that, that does well. Well, and it, and it impacts the office because it, it makes it a high stress environment, which yeah. means everybody feels that that works there. And, um, you, I, you know, I compare it to the therapeutic relationship. Okay. So what I love about EMDR, what I love about much of these trauma informed techniques, that's, that's kind of a new buzz thing. Um, but what that means is I'm not going to put somebody into re-injury, you know? So, we want to here here's what it feels like you know you're going to be uncomfortable now let's deal with it let's pull you out of that but i don't want somebody sitting there crying and sobbing and you know because because it's breaking them down and research now shows us that when we continually break someone down and expose them to that trauma and expose them repeatedly the healing process is a lot longer than keeping them in this kind of window right so we want to expose them to it 
yeah, that's uncomfortable. I know you don't like it. Let's cry that out a little bit, right? But but it's manageable, right? And you're not going into re-injury. It's that manageable piece. So me as a therapist, I need to kind of monitor that and say, oh, I'm noticing that you're getting really upset, right? So let's start pulling you out of that. So we keep them kind of in that sweet spot. Now, what I found was is that that really helps the therapeutic um, relationship, okay? It's important for that relationship to be strong because that's rapport that, you know, trust that's, um, but, but what I find more than anything is when someone comes to see me, if they feel, man, every time I go see Ryan, um, I'm just crying, sobbing on the floor, you know, it takes me three weeks to just like get back to, to square one, you know, and feel okay. That puts a negative impact on our relationship. Right. They don't want to come and see me not because likely of that. To come back, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because I always feel worse when I, you know. So what I find is that when when my clients and they do just about every time, right? When they walk out of there, I need to make sure that they feel better than when they came in. And if that happens, and if they're able to go throughout the week and say, "Hey, I had this happen, and here's how I solved it," you know. All of these things make me look good, <laughs> you know, first of all, but it also increases um, and, and strengthens that therapeutic relationship. I feel great every time I go to see Ryan. Right. So I like Ryan. Right. Mm-hmm. But that's, you know, that's something in ABA applied behavior analysis um, that, that is called stimulus to stimulus pairing. And, and that was a really big aha moment for me, you know, is, is, well, first of all, when I'm working with kids, especially I have to get that rapport going. So we need to connect, we need to, you know, have that trust and that bond. Um, because otherwise kids are kicking and screaming, you know, they don't want to go to therapy. You kidding me? So I have to somehow make this very valuable for them, but also I, but I, I can't do that until they trust me, you know? So if, if a desired outcome, and this is the stimulus to stimulus pairing, if a desired outcome or something that they really love is maybe an M and M, right. Um, and I'm going to find this out from the parents, first of all. So if that's what that is, then then the first sessions are going to be me just handing them M and M's, and I like how you're sitting next to me. Thanks for playing, you know. Uh, but I'm 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 pairing that desired stimulus of the M and M with me, something that they don't really care for, right? right? So I'm increasing that therapeutic relationship. We we try to do that as well, you know, <clears throat> reward reward the patients. Yeah, I mean, obviously, yeah. there's a lot of. Um, vocal coaching you know and yeah we're, we're creating a positive environment with our words and soothing and everything absolutely and then there's the high fives the balloons the toys the mm-hmm. you know the rewards afterwards where hey you just did this it was yeah awesome and you didn't think you could do it but you did right you know? and, right and um why don't i get those at the dentist <laughs> <laughs> maybe you should ask your dentist <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you awesome. know and, and then like we find tremendous amount of satisfaction when our friends come to us and say hey our kids are looking forward to coming back to see you yes well, like, who wants to go to their dentist? that's huge right? i know <laughs> No, that's huge but it's it's creating safety i mean and and let's go back to you know the the incident with um well when you guys came in and about the fight and what did i have you do I close your eyes do your heart focus breathing yeah. but not actually even look at each other when you're talking about the fight yeah. because because if i'm looking at you there's a whole pressure that's added there and and that doesn't create safety all all we really want is we want to create so much safety that we can say okay i can be vulnerable i can do this i can talk about this i can so as you do that with your clients right in the in the office and making them feel more and more safe about i know it's painful but here's why we're doing it right Right. why do you think it's important for us to do this why you know as as they start to understand that and have that knowledge and power too and create that safety with them now they can kind of overcome the pain absolutely you and know it's interesting because there is literally a physical release oh, that your body feels time. when you process big through time. something yeah that's heavily emotional right right i was just, just thinking about like the toys balloons <laughs> that whole thing yeah uh so when I was younger, I got in a bike wreck. I mean, I was like five years old, killed the root of my tooth. Mm. So I got a black tooth. So I was in the dentist quite a bit. But I specifically remember I did not mind going because he had like a bowling, little toy bowling thing 
And I thought it was the most fun thing. Mm -hmm. So I was willing to sacrifice mm -hmm. the dentist. <laughs> right, because the reward was... the reward of that yeah. bowling thing. So I just remember as a kid, it was just odd that you brought that up. And my process was, I'm willing to sacrifice what... Maybe I don't like the dentist, right. but I love that. But I, I <laughs> like that you brought that up because that's really about value and benefit and reward and how is something, you know, benefiting me. And and I think that that's important, too, because like with, you know, again, with kiddos, I'm, I'm sitting there going, OK, I'm talking to them saying, why are you even here? What's the point of being? What can you get from this? Right. You know, and and so having you guys sit there and do your processing and really feeling what it feels like that, oh, I can do this and be vulnerable with my partner and we can talk about anything this way and we can overcome anything in this. That's a lot of value and benefit right there, right. a ton. Mm -hmm. And and when I have more value and benefit on something, I'm more willing to overcome the pain. I'm more willing to overcome whatever that obstacle is because I want that reward. You know, and and so, I mean, you know, if they start to understand that, too, it's like, yeah, I know it's painful, but, you know, we're fixing your teeth. Right. Or we're, you know, when I've had kids tell me afterwards that I saved their life because they were in so much pain from this toothache. Oh, that's I, cool. I had a kid. We had one kid. I feel bad for him. He had he came in with an abscess. It was, you know, we got the call at like five o'clock at night. And so I was like, well. Meet me at the office. They're like, really? Like, what are we gonna do? Can't do right. the boat, right. you know? And um, and he was really in a bad spot. And um, I was able to get him numb. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I took his. It was one of his permanent molars. I took, took his tooth out. And when he when when we were finished with that, he gave me a hug. Mm -hmm. And every time I've seen him since then, like he comes over and I'm important then. And, mm -hmm. he's, and he's he's one of the ones that said you saved my life. Well, and uh, he was in so incredible. much pain. It was so miserable. That's this poor incredible. kid had been dealing with it for years, yeah. and going to doctors who misdiagnosed it mm -hmm. and didn't say, oh, they didn't look in the mouth and say, oh, there's a big hole in your tooth. You go see a dentist. They were treating him for trigeminal neuralgia and other things. Mm -hmm. And it's like, goodness, guys, like you know, physicians, we yeah. need to we need to make sure you look at the teeth. Don't just don't just use the tongue depressor to look down the throat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> look at the teeth too. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and so many times we find that that's a mess. But I was I was grateful for that experience. It really helped me. Oh yeah. Help yeah. my help my positive outlook about going to work. Mm -hmm. And we are actually doing good here. Oh and, yeah. And I think for me as far as my mental health and being a dentist, I need to celebrate those small wins more often mm -hmm. rather than because it's stressful. You're running a business, it's you really have stressful. staff, you know, you have, you know, HIPAA, OSHA, I know. HR, I know. all these acronyms, <laughs> payroll. I mean, all this stuff that is unrelated to your job. And then your job's inherently stressful too. Right. So I, it, it, right. Was, it was really important for me to start my mental health journey mm -hmm. because I was starting to go down that road. Right. Well, I found too, I mean, and you and I are in that similar kind of, I guess, position where <laughs> sometimes I can't, I don't have space for my own, right? right? I don't have space for my own because I'm dealing with other people's lives. I mean, this is serious stuff. It's, it's their oh. lives. It's, it's their, it's their, you know, comfortability. It's, you know, their quality of life. Right. Well, and having space for your own and then coming home mm -hmm. and I'm a husband and I'm a father. Mm -hmm. And you know, if you have, if you're involved in the church or mm -hmm. you know, local civic duties, I mean, you don't have space for you. Go, 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 go. Yeah. Right. Do therapists right. see therapists? Uh, they should. I mean, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, yeah. Uh, one of my colleagues, I loved it. She's like, let's have a chat. That, yeah. <laughs> that's what that meant. We're going to, we're going to trade sessions now, <laughs> you know, but uh, yeah, I think that's absolutely important. Um, I think what's neat though, is that the more I arm, you know, others with these tools, then uh, I'm practicing them myself. Right. So yes. I can actually heal myself a lot better um, and have, you know what I mean? Because I'm, I'm doing it every single day. If, if I, if I say in the office, you need to try this, then you better be sure that I've tried it too, you right. know, and that I've really implemented it in my own life. You have to. That's great. You know, like they say to, to teach us to learn twice. And so it does, like say, reinforce mm -hmm. for you. Mm -hmm. Helps you be stronger. Well, I have to. I have to experience that release too. You know, I mean, that you were talking about. It's like I have to understand. Oh, that's what it feels like. 
to be in coherence, yeah. to, oh. you know, to be okay. That was actually very significant. Mm-hmm. So when I when we got to it that is. coherent point for me, I I really was amazed at how relieved mm-hmm. it was. Like I had all these emotions just come at once. I was I felt relief. I felt mm-hmm. empathy for my wife and mm-hmm. the situation I put her in. I had understanding mm-hmm. that I didn't have five minutes before that. Right, and right. it was already there, mm-hmm. but I wasn't able to get it. So where it was in my thinking brain. Right. Well, I tell people all the time, I mean, it's, it's process your process, your ego and speak your truth because, you know, ego is really what stops us. Ego is what causes fights. It's, it's, yeah, that's why I didn't want a butterfly hug. Right. Ego. Yeah, totally. <laughs> totally. This, yeah. Is, this is dumb. <laughs> right. No, right. It's not. That's not a man thing to do. Or, right. You know, whatever yeah. it is. Yeah, <laughs> right. absolutely. Right. I know. Cause it feels foolish, you know, and, and, you know, of course that's part of the reason why I make everybody close their eyes because that really? actually helps. Yeah, it does. Yeah. It does. Mm-hmm. Well, because I mean, and I'm not going to lie. I, I look, we don't want to look at each other doing, yeah. <laughs> doing these funny things, you know, yeah. but, but fact of the matter is, is, is I, I have more value on how I feel after I do them than the pride that I have of doing them. You know, you know, it's funny. I checked him too. When he told me to close my eyes on that, is he staring at me? I know. And, and I, know. I looked and you weren't. No. I know. <laughs> it's such a respect. But, I, but that gave, I was going to say that created right. a lot of safety though. Well, you could be vulnerable. Right. right because, know? well, you know, think about it this way. If, if you and Meredith are having an argument, right. And you're looking at each other in the eyes, how hard is that to really talk about Here, here's why I'm having this problem. Right. Mm-hmm. Or how the information is received because you know if you're looking at them you're typically in some sort of fight or flight i got to protect myself you know stance and um they're gonna say i'm not happy because of this and immediately you think to yourself as their partner well you're telling me where i'm not making you happy is that necessarily the case meredith (laughs) right yeah it's not you know but but wait what so we had another experience where like after that session and I was just able to not take on the negative emotion Yeah, because I was yeah. like, okay, yeah, I, I understand why you feel this way, but I don't have to internalize, mm. you know, all of this because right. it's happening. Well, I love it. those moments too, because like, those are the moments where you're like, oh, it's not about me. I'm not, you know, <laughs> you're just telling me though right. that, that something needs to be changed because yeah. it is about you. It is where you need help. So do you recommend for couples when they have emotional discussions to close <laughs> their eyes? Oh, for sure. Because, because I've sure. been told. It takes I'm, the pressure off. I've been told just. You know, from presentation, I'm fairly intimidating. Mm-hmm. So I'm sure I'm giving intimidating uh, visual cues that I have no clue that I'm really transmitting. Oh, right. Right. Just because right. that's my persona. And um, it's not like I can, un, you know, I can't unintimidate mm-hmm. <laughs> my look. Mm-hmm. It's just how I look. But, you know? but think about this, Lonnie. What was the difference between, oh, he's staring at me and then you look at me and I'm not? Right. What did that do for you? Safety. Yeah. 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 And that's what you're providing your partner, you know, by, by, by closing your eyes. It's, it's, it's safer for me to be vulnerable, to speak my truth when I know that you're not, you know, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know, I, I, we probably better wrap this, but I want to ask one more question. I think this is a question we get asked one of the most asked questions in our comments. Um, and I think one of the most heartbreaking question that we get in our comments is what do you do Mm -hmm. if you know, as you and your partner, you and your spouse need help and you're willing to go get it Mm -hmm. and you're willing to do it, but they are not. Mm -hmm. What do you do? I find that, well, and, and really circle back. um, It starts from within. And I find that almost all the time, once you start making those changes, it, it in a sense gives everybody around you permission. Permission to change as well. Mm-hmm. But they have to find value there. They have to. Yeah, they do. Right. They have to find right. value. And I think if they see positive changes in you, that adds to the value. Mm-hmm. But also the man, you got to give yourself permission to see yourself mm-hmm. as you really are. Mm-hmm. And that, to just be honest, that's, the, e- that's the ego. Right. Right. That's the ego. And I had the hardest time breaking through that myself. Well, because I, and that's what like a midlife crisis is. Right. It, it's just that, well, my truth wasn't celebrated. I wasn't told that I was OK to have those thoughts, those beliefs, those I don't really know who I am. I don't know what really makes me happy. So 
in a midlife crisis, I'm going to go skydiving. I'm going to buy a, you know, sports car. I'm going to date younger people. You're just, you're just researching. You're trying to figure out who you really are. And, and, and you're, you know, you've got a, a cracked and shaky foundation that you're just trying to rebuild. You know, what really actually makes me tick? What makes, you know, what? So to circle back around in that, in that scenario, um, working on yourself is never a bad thing. No, and that may be the key no. actually to opening your partner's heart. Well, I think it's always the key to be honest. I think it's always, um, because we're not chasing once again, we're just, here's where I am, you know, and typically people kind of gravitate towards that because they see the, they see the benefit out of it. And even man, and then I think, you know, you, you covered this, but even if your spouse maybe never goes to therapy as long, if you can get to the point where I'm okay with me Mm -hmm. and I'm okay I'm, I can be happy, mm-hmm. right? And, and I can be great and wonderful. And most of the time it would be inspiring, but, um, but being able to be okay with who you are, mm-hmm. feeling comfortable in your own skin mm-hmm. is very important. Yeah, it is. And you even know, if and you're I, in an uncomfortable situation. Right, absolutely. Well, and, and I just find that things kind of work themselves out when you start off with that frame of mind, you know? Um, when I really just said, okay, <laughs> you know, given all my stuff, because I can look at all my past or whatever and judge that. Um, But the fact of the matter is, is that made me who I am and who I am is dynamic and my relationships are incredible. But that's, that's really when I started to find my soul connections. You know, those people that I just, I can trust 100%. I mean, they are just, they have my back no matter what. And they're just my people, you know, but I didn't really I mean, I've had people in my life, of course, that were that, but I didn't really, I, now it's like those kind of people are left and right, you know, uh, coming in and out because, because I'm just good, no matter what, yeah. I'm just good, no matter what the situation is, I'm okay. Like say so your vibe attracts your tribe. It, it does. <laughs> right. It absolutely does. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Very good. Well. I'd love to sit and talk all day. Yeah. <laughs> Same, I know. <laughs> it's fantastic. We should probably wrap this up. It's been a great episode, Ryan. Really Absolutely. appreciate having Thank you on. You. Ryan Wade, everybody. Certified trauma therapist, Phoenix, Arizona. He'll help you fix your stuff. <laughs> Go see him. Thank you. All right. All right. Um, as we always like to end our episodes, we invite you to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to share this with your friends and family if you found value in this episode, which I don't know how you didn't. This was good content. A great job. Thank you for being on our show, Ryan. Thank you. We'll see you everybody next time on the next episode of The Value Script. <laughs>